Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, now that we've got some shape keys here to work with, let's go ahead and create a few control objects so that we can use the shape keys without having to come in here and use the slider every time. We're going to create some control objects like the ones we already have for the rig. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the character and go into edit mode and select a point here and I'll zoom in to that point with the period key on the numpad and what I'd like to do is snap the cursor with shift s and cursor to selected I want to snap the cursor there because that's where I want to create the first bone for my control object for the eyebrows so I'll go back to object mode select the rig and then go into edit mode here. Now that I've done that and we can see the original bone shapes for the rig, I'm going to press Shift A and add a bone. So I'm going to take that now and move it straight out. And this will be the control object for the brow. Now I'll zoom in a bit here. And I'm going to move this back to it so it's just in front of that eyebrow, maybe right around there here. I should give it a name, so I'll press N to open up the Properties panel here. And let's scroll down and give it a name. Let's call it Brow Control underscore L. Now we need to hook up this bone with a shape key and we want this bone to drive a shape key. So what I'm going to do is go to the animation screen layout here and we've got the uh, the dope sheet and the graph editor here. The graph editor can be changed here from this F curves to drivers. And once we do that, if I press the N key, that will bring up this uh, properties panel within the drivers window. So from here I need to tell Blender what I want to drive. So I need to go back to object mode and select the character here. So now if I select the shape key I want to drive, I can come down here to the value field and right click on it. And here is where I can click add driver. So if I click add driver here, that will add the driver over here in the drivers panel. And if I click, I get this properties panel now. In this panel, I'm just going to collapse a couple of these things so I can get down to the driver's area. And in this part of the panel, I'm going to choose for the type, I'm going to choose average value. And down here under transform channel, I'm going to select the armature. And I'll also select that brow control underscore L that I created. So then I need to just choose which transform I'm going to use to control the blend shape. So I want to move that control up and down. So that'll be the Y location. And let's do it in the local space of the bone here. So I'm going to select that bone and zoom in. And then I'll just grab it in the Y and drag it up. And that will now control that particular blend shape. So now that I've got that bone driving the brow up, let's also use this bone to drive the brow down as well. So I'm going to select brow down underscore L here. And I'm going to right click and choose add driver. So now this particular one, brow down, I'll select that. And we need to go through the same process here. We need to go through, um, we need to change this to averaged value. We need to select the armature. And we also need to select that brow control underscore L. Now I also want to move this in the Y. And I want to use local space. But here's the difference is if I, I'm going to press the home key here to see my uh, graph a little better. 
this keyframe right here, if I scroll up and go to the active keyframes, you can see that on frame one, the value is one. Down here, if I select this keyframe, you can see it's on frame zero and the value is zero. So what I want to do is when I pull this bone down, I want to drive the brow down just like I did with the brow up. So to do that, what I'm going to do is change the value here to negative one. So I'm going to change the value to negative one. And that flips the graph here. So the curve is pointing downwards. So now I should have the brow up with the graph going upwards at a, a value of one. And I should have the brow down at a value here of negative one with the graph going downward. So now if I choose that bone and drag it up, I get the brow up. If I drag it down, I get the brow down. All right, so let's try the brow sad. So I've got a third shape key here that's controlling the brows. If I choose the brow sad, and I right click the value and click add driver. Now that will be added over here. So we need to go through the same process of selecting the brow sad, changing the type to averaged value, selecting the armature, and then the brow control underscore L. But for this one, this particular shape key kind of turned the brow, kind of rotates it a bit. So what I'd like to do is drive this particular shape key with a rotation instead of a uh, movement up and down. So I think I want to drive it through the, let me see, around the z-axis here. So I'm going to come down here and under type I'll choose z rotation and I'll choose local space. So with the Z rotation, if I select that and then turn it, I want it to rotate this way, but it's actually rotating this way. So I need to do the negative one trick here. So I'm gonna select the character, and with that brow sad selected, I'll come up to the active keyframe. So I wanna choose the brow sad and change that value to negative one. And then if I choose that bone again and rotate it, you see now it's turning in the proper direction. So the nice thing about it is we can drive multiple shape keys with one control object. So now let's work on creating a custom control object for this particular bone. I'm gonna go back to my default view here. And for this control object, I think I just want to draw out um, kind of an eyebrow shape. So I'll go back to object mode here. And maybe in a new layer, so I can see it, I'll create a new circle object. Go to my uh, top view, and in edit mode, I'll maybe just grab one of these vertices, go to my proportional editing tool, and maybe just move this up and move these out just to try and get some sort of a shape here that looks a little like an eyebrow. So I'll call this, uh, let's call this eyebrow shape. And back in my original layer, let's go and choose that bone here. Go to pose mode. Let's go to the bone panel and scroll all the way down here. And under the custom shape here, let's choose that eyebrow shape. So now, if we select wireframe, now we can see it where the bone would be. So to adjust that, I'm gonna press shift and select that other layer there so I can see it. And I'll select that custom 
shape and go straight to edit mode and select all the vertices of that custom shape there. And now I can scale it and move it the way I need to to get it to approximately the right place here. So I'm going to shrink it down a little more. Um, I think I will actually maybe rotate it. Let's see if I can do that. Rotate it just a bit. Now I need to do one more thing here. Um, I need to parent this bone to the head bone so it follows along um, when we animate the character. So I'll go back to edit mode here. And what I need to do is parent this bone to the head bone. So I'm going to select the brow control and shift select the head bone. And then press control P and choose keep offset. So now if I go back to pose mode, now I should be able to select that brow move it up and down. I should be able to rotate it. And in addition, I should be able to animate the character and have that brow control follow along. Well, the last thing I'd like to do is adjust the range and limits for my control object. So if I if I click and drag this control object up, it takes a long time for it to get to the maximum value of the shape key. So I've got to drag the control object all the way up here to get that shape key all the way up. Same thing with the down as well. So I want to have it so I'm just moving it right in this area and that's it. So what let's do is let's go back into the animation screen layout here. And if I select the character, I can see my uh, drivers. So for the brow up right here, I'm going to scroll down and choose add modifier. And I'm going to choose generator. Now in the generator, this multiplier right here will uh, slow down the movement of the of the control object. So I'm going to try a multiplier of three in here and move that up and test that. That's a little bit better. Let me see if I can get it a little closer. Uh, how about six here? Let's try that. So I'll select that and move it up. Yeah, that's good. So it actually the eyebrow moves with the control here. All right, that's good. Let's try brow down, click add modifier, generator, and I'll choose six here. How about negative six? Let's try that, negative six. So if I bring that down, now we can move that eyebrow and that control will stay along with it. And um, what I'd like to do is limit the movement of this particular control object. So currently, if I drag it up, it's got a good range here, but I can continue dragging it way, way up here if I wanted. So what I'll do is come over here to the Bone Constraint panel here, and let's try limiting its location. So I'm going to press the N key to look at the location panel here. Let's bring it up to its maximum height here. So it looks like the value of the shape key ends right about here. So I'm going to take that value, copy it, and in the maximum Y, I'll paste that there. Um, in the minimum, let's come over here and drag it down like so. So it right about there. And let's grab that value and paste it into the minimum Y. Now I'm also going to change this to local space here. So now I should only be able to move this um, control down to there and up to there. And that's it. 
Now I can also do this for the X and the Z because I really don't want to move those um, at all. So I'll just check the minimum and maximum X and Z. And now I should be able to just hit the G key and I can only move it up and down and only within that range of movement. So I hope that's been helpful. If it has, please hit the like button, subscribe to get weekly updates, and I'll see you next time. Take care.